<laughs> can be combined uh, with, uh, with labon chip and so on. Uh, and so coming back um, more on uh, optical isolator, uh, so these devices uh, so has uh, need to have this property. So it must uh, have a transmission of the light, uh, which uh, at 100%, but it, would pre it must prevent uh, backward uh, transmission. And finally, uh, it's characterized uh, by the isolation ratio, which is the ratio between the transmitted light in forward direction uh, and uh, backward direction. And uh, it also has to, to have uh, the lowest uh, uh, insertion losses. And finally, it's characterized by a figure of night, which is the ratio between the both. And uh, so doing this uh, function is quite, uh, 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 it's already exists in bulk devices, and we already have some isolators, uh, which are uh, just uh, connected by two fibers. But the challenge is to be able to integrate the function directly uh, on, uh, on uh, circuits. Uh, and the commercial uh, devices today are made, uh, are based on the Faraday rotation. And the Faraday rotation is very difficult to, to integrate in, in a circuit because uh, because usually uh, the waveguides are polarization dependent, and so it's uh, already not uh, relevant. So there have been uh, many um, solutions which have been uh, studied to make integrated uh, isolator. We need some uh, non-linear functions. So there are many uh, non-linear functions which have been proposed, but the magneto optical functions are the most relevant, and especially. Uh, the the, the t uh, effect, uh, and uh, and so th th that's uh, what is uh, illustrated here. Uh, the, among the all the magneto optical effect uh, which can we can uh, do this one is par particularly interesting because it doesn't change the polarization. So uh, t mock effect is a, a effect which occur at the interface between uh, two, uh, two layers, one, one magneto optical layer and one dielectric or something else uh, layer. And when the light uh, is reflected at, at the interface, uh, in fact, the reflection uh, in, in one direction is, uh, has different characteristics than the reflection in the uh, backward direction. Uh, and it occurs when the magnetization is uh, um, uh, parallel to the interface, perpendicular to the propag propagation direction, and when the, uh, the polarization of the light is perpendicular uh, to the interface. So it's quite uh, precise conditions, uh, but it's uh, very easy to realize in, uh, in, uh, in photonic waveguides. And so in this case, uh, when this re reflection is non-reciprocal, uh, it, it can uh, be non, uh, uh, the non reciprocity is as well uh, on the losses uh, during uh, reflection as on the phase shift. So we can uh, use the, the boss effect uh, to, to make uh, some different function. And the, 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 the amount of uh, non reciprocity which can be uh, seen on the um, value uh, of the effective index of the traveling mode, uh, guiding mode, uh, the, the amount of uh, non-reciprocity non is uh, dependent on the gyrotropy, uh, which is a non-diagonal, uh, which is found in the non-diagonal element of the dielectric constant. So it's really a, a matter of uh, optical effect. Yeah. Um, so there have been um, many uh, devices which have been proposed for uh, several uh, years now uh, based on TMOC. Uh, and so I will just do some uh, to give an idea of the limitation today. Uh, so uh, one of the first device uh, which was made was uh, based on a, a ferro um, uh, a, uh, Cobalt, uh, iron cobalt, sorry, iron cobalt layer uh, on the top of a uh, semiconductor optical amplifier. And uh, so there are non, non reciprocal losses because of, of TMOC uh, during the propagation. And uh, the, but the losses are very high because the interaction uh, between the optical signal with the metal. 
and the losses are compensated by the amplification uh, thanks to the semiconductor optical amplifier. Uh, and here we have the same kind of uh, devices. Uh, this one uh, operates with a TM mode, uh, with so vertical uh, uh, polarization. And uh, this one is the same pr principle, but with, with a T mode, uh, with the uh, iron uh, layer on the on the side of the of the amplifier. So these uh, devices were quite interesting, but uh, fi finally, the, the, because of the losses, the power budget is very high, uh, and uh, so that was finally the limitation uh, because uh, the trade-off between uh, the power budget, the losses, and so on was not sufficient to, to have a, a sufficient insulation ratio for application. So there were uh, other uh, approach based on um, phase non-reciprocity. Non uh, so one uh, is using uh, interferometer, so it's a silicon waveguide uh, interferometer with uh, on the top a garnet layer which is bonded. Uh, and um, uh, and this one uh, is more recent and is it's a ring resonator uh, with also a garnet layer on the top uh, and uh, uh, the, the, uh, and also based on a non reciprocal phase shift. But the difficulty uh, uh, of this uh, approach uh, is first the integration of the garnet on the waveguide. And uh, also the fact that uh, the in interference uh, or the resonance uh, approach uh, makes the bandwidth very narrow. So it works only on very precise wavelengths. Uh, so it's quite uh, a drawback, draw drawback also for uh, applications. Uh, and so finally, uh, this one uh, are show also limitation uh, because of difficult integration and narrow bandwidth. So the first point uh, which can be improved uh, uh, is also to have a higher, I, I, I didn't mention also, when we use garnet, uh, the advantage is that there are low losses uh, in the garnet, but the magnetoptical effect is quite low also, uh, much lower than in the metal, uh, in the ferro ferromagnetic metals. So uh, one way to improve uh, this device is to try to enhance the magneto optical effect. And so the uh, usual uh, approach uh, to hand on the effects is to combine uh, the physical effect with plasmonic. Uh, so I remind you that uh, a surface plasma uh, is obtained uh, by coupling uh, between an electromagnetic wave and um, the, elect the surface uh, electron uh, of a metal. So there is a, a a collective uh, oscillation between uh, the both and it makes uh, it uh, allow to concentrate uh, light at the interface between uh, the dielectric and the metal. Uh, and because of this high concentration, the physical effects uh, which are in the dielectric uh, material are uh, finally are enhanced. Okay? Uh, and so we, if we combine uh, this plasmonic effect with a magneto-optical uh, layer, uh, we can strongly enhance uh, the effective magneto-optical effect. Uh, and moreover, uh, to obtain uh, this plasma, we need to have an electric field of the wave perpendicular to the interface. So finally, it's exactly the same uh, configuration as in the case of uh, TMOC. Uh, so finally, uh, it's uh, really interesting to combine the both to enhance uh, so this non-reciprocity at the uh, in waveguides. Uh, here uh, we we can uh, have the magneto-optical effect in, either in the metal or in the dielectric layer. Uh, it will give the same kind of results. But of course, in our case, it's better to uh, to have the magneto-optical effect in the uh, in the dielectric layer. Uh, and uh, to, to enhance so the, the effect in the layer which is not lossy. Uh, but uh, you, you can have all the combinations. So um, uh, anyway, when, even when uh, we, we use this magneto-plasmonic effect, there is still a trade-off uh, between the magneto-optical effect and the losses because uh, uh, we have uh, had the, the, this metal layer 
and for me, it increases the loss. Uh, so the, the, um, the aspect that really, uh, the magnetoplasmonic really solve is the footprint, so the size of the devices, uh, because the, the effect is enhanced. Uh, uh, and it's also the bandwidth, because thanks to interaction with metal, uh, the, all the resonance are broader. Uh, but it does, doesn't really solve uh, the trade-off between the non-reciprocity and the losses. Uh, and so in this context, uh, we, have, um, we have proposed another approach that I, I, will, uh, I will show you, which add another effect, uh, which is uh, based on coupled mode uh, in magnetoplasmonic uh, well case. So this is the outline uh, of my talk. So I will first explain uh, this um, Magnetoplasmonic uh, waveguide, uh, uh, couple magnetoplasmonic waveguide, we have uh, called that magneto B plasmonic waveguides. Uh, and then I will uh, explain how we use that to make an isolator and uh, the first step to, to realize integration of the device, the device on photonic uh, circuits. So the basic structure uh, is a plasmonic slot waveguide. So uh, this is a waveguide uh, which, which is made of a structure with a metal, a dielectric, and a metal. Uh, we can excite uh, a plasma uh, at each interface, metal, dielectric. And when the thickness of the dielectric is sufficiently uh, low, uh, there is a coupling between the two plasma. And so we generate uh, 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 symmetric and anti-symmetric uh, coupled mode. And so one is a short range uh, SPP because it has uh, high losses. And uh, uh, the LR SPP has, uh, is a long range but because it's less lossy, but uh, it's, uh, long range means uh, only a few, a few micron, micron uh, propagation possibility. Uh, and, uh, now, if we uh, replace the dielectric uh, layer by a magneto picol layer, uh, we still have uh, this copper mode, but the profile uh, of the amplitude uh, is, uh, uh, becomes asymmetric, and the asymmetry is inversed for the, the both copper mode. And so this is uh, uh, totally uh, due to the effect <coughs> of, uh, of TMOC at the interface uh, of, uh, uh, at, at each interface of the slot waveguide. So we have uh, tried to understand uh, why we, we observe this, um, uh, this asymmetry. Uh, and so you, you can calculate uh, the, the couple mode and the structure by solving a Maxwell equation uh, taking into account the, the dielectric tensor uh, for the magneto picol layer here. Uh, and so you, you can calculate in and solve uh, the profile, uh, determine the mode profile uh, of the propagating wave. And we characterize this uh, mode profile uh, by the asymmetry uh, of, uh, between the, the, the both sides of the mode, uh, so, uh, which is uh, uh, represented by this uh, parameter. And uh, this parameter uh, is uh, as an approximated expression. Uh, um, in, it includes, sorry, uh, this uh, alpha parameter with uh, this approximated expression, which is proportional to G, so the gyrotropy. Uh, and it's uh, also dependent on the A, the thickness of the layer, magnetopical layer, and also the di diagonal element uh, of uh, the, the the electric constant. Uh, and we can uh, show that uh, if we increase uh, either uh, the thickness or G or uh, the dielectric constant, we increase alpha and uh, it increases asymmetry percentage. Uh, so it's very interesting because it's, it's a magneto picol effect, but which can be controlled not only by the gyrotropy, but also by, by geometrical parameters. Uh, and so we can check, for example, here, uh, the dependence uh, of the asymmetry percentage versus the waveguide uh, width uh, for different value of G. Uh, of course, G uh, 0.1 is uh, not uh, realistic, okay? but the, other, the two other one uh, correspond to material which can uh, exist. And 
And uh, then we, we, we try to understand why uh, we have this dependence on geometrical parameters. So we can uh, still calculate uh, the dispersion relation uh, of uh, the, the couple mode. And uh, we can show that the, the propagation constant of this couple mode uh, has this uh, kind of uh, expression. Uh, with a, a first, uh, with a beta A here, uh, which depend only on uh, the thickness A, and a beta G, which depend only on, the, on G. Okay. And this kind of expression uh, is already similar to what is obtained uh, in a couple mode theory. Uh, and uh, more precisely, uh, the, here the ratio between uh, beta G and beta A is exactly uh, the parameter alpha I have shown before. And in the couple mode theory, uh, this corresponds to uh, the asynchronism factor. So asynchronism fac factor uh, is a factor which uh, is considered is a case where you couple two waveguides uh, or two modes uh, which are different. Okay. Uh, and uh, finally, the beta G uh, corresponds to the uh, mismatch, finally, the, the difference between the two waveguides, and uh, beta A uh, corresponds to the coupling strength between the, the, two, the, the two modes. And finally, we have a complete analogy uh, with uh, this uh, couple mode theory in the case of different waveguide, but with a difference, uh, important difference that uh, in our case it's non reciprocal. Uh, and uh, finally, it's, it shows that uh, the, the mode asymmetrization uh, results from the competition between the, the coupling strengths and uh, the, the fact that the, the two waveguides are different. So in our case, the two waveguides are the interface, uh, the, plas the two plasmonic interface, and they are different because of TMOC, uh, uh, because they propagate in the same direction, okay? But they are uh, in opposite uh, uh, symmetry, and uh, and so finally, uh, what we, we we see is that when uh, when we increase the distance between the two plasmons, uh, the coupling coupling strength decrease, and finally, and the TMOC effect uh, has more uh, impact on the profile, and that's the reason why when we increase the size uh, the width of the slot waveguide. Uh, the asymmetry increase at the same time. And for the same, re uh, same reason, when uh, we increase the uh, dielectric constant in the center, uh, we also increase the asymmetry, uh, because in this case, the plasmons are more confined uh, along the, the interface. So the, finally, the coupling decreases. So finally, it's very uh, 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 easy, uh, easy to understand uh, why we have this effect. And so we can play now uh, we, we know that we can play on uh, different geometrical parameters to, to balance uh, the, 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 symmetry, the asymmetrization of the mode. Um, so, uh, before to, um, to explain how we use this uh, to make an isolator, or we propose to use it to make, to make an isolator, I will just uh, make some comments about magnetopical coupled waveguides, so without plasmonic. Finally, because it's just a matter of uh, competition between coupling and the uh, TMOC effect, uh, we, we think that we, we should obtain the same thing uh, with a dielectric coupled waveguide with a magneto optical layer inside here. So here it's a waveguide, a classical waveguide, the dielectric waveguide, and a magneto optical layer uh, between the both. And so when uh, there is no uh, magnetization, so the, the coupled mode, the are symmetric. So here, the, the, this is uh, just the intensity, which is the same for the two supermodes. And uh, when there is a magnetization, uh, we can see asymmetry uh, of the couple mode. And uh, we can propagate them. So here, it's uh, the profile of the two couple modes. Simple. And when uh, they are propagating, uh, there are some uh, here, the boss are pro uh, propagating. Uh, with uh, uh, two directions of uh, magnetization, so here uh, negative and positive, and uh, we can see uh, opposite beating uh, of the two, the two modes. So it's just to illustrate uh, the fact that uh, uh, finally it's quite a general uh, behavior 
uh, of coupled waveguide with magneto pico effect. So now coming back, uh, oh, no, I have forgotten something important, sorry. Uh, in this, uh, uh, in this simulation, what uh, is probably not uh, easy to see is that the length of propagation is of uh, several millimeters. Okay, that's the main difference between the uh, uh, coupled dielectric waveguide and the plasmonic waveguide is that uh, uh, the, the, the evolution is much uh, 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 weaker. Uh, and uh, and finally, to to be able to make uh, Uh, a device with that, we need uh, we, to, to we 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 need a very low lossy uh, magneto optical uh, materials to be able to use uh, this kind of effect with the electric waveguide. Uh, with plasmonic, we will see that uh, the effect is uh, occur on very short uh, propagation lengths, and it's uh, it becomes more realistic. Uh, and so this, uh, even if it's not uh, really, it's not compact at all, uh, uh, it's also interesting to, to, to study this dielectric uh, coupled waveguide because uh, we know that uh, it's uh, quite representative of the different effects. So now, uh, how we can use uh, these uh, properties to make a magneto Uh, B plasmonic isolator. So uh, we have seen uh, so this uh, asymmetric uh, field profile, uh, and so when we propagate uh, this uh, field in one direction, we have this profile. And uh, for symmetry reason, if it propagates <coughs> in the other direction, you have the, the opposite symmetry. But to, to make uh, the, the, the problem here is that the two couple modes have uh, opposite uh, symmetry in the same direction. Uh, to make an optical isolator, we need to break uh, at the same time time and space symmetry. Okay. And so uh, a solution is to inject only uh, one of the two super modes. So we have to select uh, one of the two super modes. Of course, we will choose the long range uh, SPP. And uh, then, so this uh, makes the time symmetry breaking, uh, but we, we also to break the spatial symmetry. And for that, we, we put some absorbers. Here it's Fabry, Fabry Perot resonator in, in a gold layer, but uh, more generally, we need absorber on one side of the slot waveguide. And so we, you can see that when it propagates, so in this direction, The, the mode is fully uh, transmitted. And in the other direction, it absorbs. And it, so it makes a isolation uh, uh, property um, function. So um, we have made some simulation uh, to evaluate uh, uh, the, the performance uh, of this kind of device. Uh, so we calculate the isolation ratio, insertion losses, and the figure of merit. Uh, so with a, a first uh, design of absorber, uh, so you can see that the reflection uh, at the entrance are quite low. The transmission is uh, uh, above uh, 60%. Uh, and the isolation ratio is uh, above 10 or 12 dB on a very wide uh, wavelength range. And, um, Uh, even more than 20 dB on, uh, more, uh, on shorter uh, wavelengths range. And this is obtained uh, with, uh, with only 0.01 gyrotropy and a uh, device length, length which is uh, shorter than 10, 10 micron. We can choose another set of uh, absorbers, uh, which will give uh, other um, uh, spectrum. Uh, Um, profile uh, and here so the, the iso isolation ratio uh, is uh, 20 dB on a wavelength range which correspond to the C band of uh, telecom for example and you can see that the figure of merit is quite quite high okay. so 
uh, with this uh, kind of uh, device, we, we can have a high bandwidth and a high figure of merit uh, isolator. Uh, and uh, moreover, it's compatible with a low gyrotropic magnetopical material. Uh, since uh, we, we can use uh, geometrical parameters or, uh, or the full stack of the different layer to, to, to improve uh, the, uh, the, the asymmetry. Uh, and so it, uh, it opens the possibility uh, to use uh, not only garnet, uh, but also uh, composite magnetopical material, uh, for example, uh, based on colloidal nanoparticle, but, uh, uh, I guess that uh, Francois will speak about that just uh, for me, so he will hear about that. And so this, uh, this kind of uh, material is very useful for uh, photonic integration because uh, uh, it's easy to deposit uh, and it's uh, compatible with uh, any kind of uh, photonic platform. So the next step uh, will be anyway to integrate uh, the device on photonic platform because for the moment, we need to, to excite uh, the mode of the slot waveguide, but it's not exactly the, the mode which is uh, in the photonic circuits. Usually a photonic circuit is a monomode uh, uh, dielectric uh, uh, waveguide which, uh, which is used and uh, we need a efficient interface uh, between the both. So one possibility, one approach, uh, it's uh, to make, so here, uh, the, the green part is a dielectric uh, waveguide of uh, the photonic circuit. And so we, we make a, a taper here uh, to uh, transfer the mode of the dielectric waveguide uh, up to the slot uh, mode waveguide by selecting uh, the LRSPP. And then, but th this uh, needs to be very narrow. And so th then we need a, a taper, another taper to enlarge and to uh, en uh, increase the asymmetry uh, of, the, of the mode. Okay. Uh, and then uh, if we are able to do that, we can just uh, insert the absorbers and have uh, isolation. Uh, but, uh, the, the, the drawback is that uh, this uh, taper here needs a large propagation length to, to, to have an interesting asymmetrization. Okay. So th this is one approach. Uh, another approach uh, is based on the mode beating. Uh, so that this, uh, uh, these approaches are, are studied and shown in the poster of Tim Hong. Uh, and uh, so it's uh, ongoing uh, work. So to conclude, uh, so we have uh, proposed uh, a, a new kind of isolator based on the magneto biplasmonic uh, effect, uh, which is uh, very compact with a large bandwidth and moreover, which should be compatible with uh, low gyrotropy uh, materials. And so the, the the work today is uh, about uh, the, the interfacing uh, of this device with a photonic circuit. I thank you for your attention. Questions in the audience, plenty. Uh, D'abord, Romain, <laughs> tu connais le boulot trop bien, donc. <laughs> yeah, but for the people online. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, I just had the question if you try to realize uh, those devices because you made the sim. Uh, yeah, so I just repeat. Uh, no, my question is uh, so. All those models that you proposed uh, are based on bismutig uh, in the simulation, if I understood well. And did you try to make them with uh, with some people and to test uh, the concept? Yes, the, we have started to fabricate this uh, this version 
but uh, it, it was really not the right moment because we, we just moved, uh, our lab moved and it was, there was COVID just after. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, this, um, this has been stopped, okay? Uh, but uh, now we are more working on the uh, optimization of the interface between to, to, uh, to start again the fabrication. Uh, because uh, all this uh, taper is very schematic here, but uh, we, we, we have some idea to have something more uh, uh, efficient. Uh, it's really a challenge to, to make this transition with asymmetrization of the mode uh, and to have no, something not uh, too lossy okay, because it's too immense plasmonic and plasmonic is always lossy. And so uh, I, I would say it's uh, ongoing. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, the question is about the dimension of uh, the, the structure which is shown here. Um, here, this, uh, this part here, uh, I guess it's quite short, it's uh, something uh, maybe 10 micron, okay? Uh, this part here is very narrow. Uh, uh, it's uh, lower than 0.5 um, micron. And uh, so here we have to go from 0.5 up to uh, two or three micron. And this part is the, diffi the, the difficult part. Uh, and it's, uh, I would say between uh, 50 and 100 micron for the moment. So it's really uh, too, too long. To, to have a good performance. Uh, thank you. I have a question about the dielectric version of maybe couple mode. In fact, in that situation, um, you do not have a short range and a long range. You have both mode have exactly the same propagation losses. So it, you, it is not possible to select, in fact. We have, you have to play with the bitting. You can select more easily uh, with uh, MMI couplers because you can uh, make some MMI couplers with uh, asymmetric, uh, oh, I mean, yes, uh, asymmetric uh, uh, coupling. So there are many, many designs to, to do that, uh, I guess. Yes. It's easier, finally, uh, to, to make the interface. Other questions? No? Um, <clears throat> I have a question myself. Uh, I'm obliged to, to ask a question. <laughs> um, so uh, at one point you said, uh, in order to, when you were looking at the, um, uh, increasing the bandwidth of the device, that you moved to um, another set of, of absorbers, but you didn't really specify what uh, changed in these absorbers. Uh, uh, you you mentioned something where I, if we use another set of absorbers, we can get a, an even higher bandwidth. But w w do you know why and what was so special about the other? No, I, I don't remember exactly the design, but in the both case, it was uh, Fabri-Pero resonators. Uh, and it, but it was just by playing on the distance between the different slits uh, because there are some coupling between them and finally uh, maybe also the number of slits and so you can play or you, you can I, I guess yes there is a many degree of freedom to to make different uh, profiles uh, yeah. but probably uh, these uh, slits are not the best you could also yeah. put uh, absorbing layer uh, or something else. That's exact. That was yeah. another question that uh, there's probably a trade-off because, uh, I mean, you need the absorbers to break the spatial symmetry, uh, but uh, if you break it too much, so if you would introduce too strong absorbers, uh, you would basically make a non-reciprocal absorber that would absorb too much also uh, in the even for the, the, the backward direction or the forward direction. No? Or something to think about. Yeah, well, I'm not, I'm, 
I'm not sure because uh, if you already have a good asymmetry between the two, I mean, the, the, the length, uh, for the moment, the length where there is an absorber is uh, maybe one micron. Okay, yeah, so so it's really very short. Yeah. Yeah so, yeah. yeah, so ideally it's, you have a perfect absorber and perfect asymmetry. Mm. So that in the one direction, the mode is completely avoiding the absorber because it's completely guided by the side where there's non -abs non, yeah. no absorber and in the other direction, it fully fills the absorber. Mm. Okay, so there's no trade-off. Um, and a, fin a final question, I think this, uh, this is probably not the most easy configuration because you will need a vertical plasmonic uh, interface. So I guess that this is a huge challenge to make a very nice uh, vertical uh, plasmonic guide in this way. So is there a, do you have any ideas about that? Uh, I, get, uh, I saw that at the beginning also, but now I'm not sure that, yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, we have to think about it as a stack of layers. Okay, it's already it's effective. No, no, I mean it's effective. You you have to think as effective index. Okay, and finally, even if um, the material magneto uh, optical material is not between uh, the two metallic parts, but it's at uh, another level, it will also work. Mm -hmm. And finally, it's relaxed completely the, this uh, constraint on uh, technology. Yeah.